What's going on guys, Arava here, and welcome back to my F1 2017 mod career mode with Esteban Ocon here in the Force Indy car for the 2017 season. We're here back with episode number four today, as you can clearly see, at a very overcast rushing Grand Prix. It was all sunny in qualifying on Saturday, and you can see we qualified just ahead of Sergio Perez, our teammate, in seventh place. You can see very two by two there around Russia, kind of like Noah's Ark, but you can see the two Ferrari cars, nothing to separate them. I was very shocked and surprised that actually ever happened. I've never seen that actually on the game where there's an exact identical time for pole position which is kind of crazy so the two Ferraris very very close indeed the two Mercedes very very close behind less than one hundredth of a second to them so it should be very close for them in the race for us we'll see if we can get the two Red Bull cars they've out qualified us as they usually should obviously last episode there was a bit of a glitch with the Red Bull cars so this time they're back with their usual spot so we'll try and see if we, if we can upset them basically but we're going to go straight into this then we go to five red lights to the Russian Grand Prix five red lights are out and we're underway and it's an initial good getaway from us, but in the second phase, in third and fourth gear, we bogged down a little bit behind Ricardo. Verstappen gets a great start there, trying to challenge Valtteri Bottas, who's bogged down by the two Ferrari cars. They go nearly four wide as we go down towards what is technically turn two here at Russia. We're tucked in behind the two Williams cars. They both jumped us down that main straight, and also the Toro Rosso car of Carlos Sainz, you can see, who's up ahead of us. So really, really poor uh, launch down that main straight. We got jumped by so many cars there. We're down to P10, P11 momentarily here. We can try and maybe grab P10 back from Carlos those signs. We go around the outside. Perez, meanwhile, our teammates have a stonking start. I think he's up into fifth place as Ricardo and myself are both bogged down there and our respective teammates have really gained and the two Williams cars really, really gained. As you can see, Sainz there going down our inside. He dives down the inside. We do a bit of a switchback move to him. We're going to try and get back this 10th place desperately. We've been trying to do so for a few corners. We finally do, thankfully. And so now we can try and chase after what will be at the moment. Ricardo, who looks to be struggling at the moment as we go through to the end of lap two, on towards lap three as the sun starts to come out now. So if there was any worries about rain doesn't look like it because the sun is coming out but we've got DRS wide open now but we're going to try and overtake Ricardo who appears to be struggling to get the Williams car obviously in a straight line so we're going to dive down the inside of Ricardo we actually last minute go down the inside also of Lance flipping stroll there as he's fallen asleep at the apex I don't know what on earth was going on in the Canadian's mind but he just didn't think to turn in there not surprisingly I was only going to go for the move on Ricardo we ended up with two moves there so I'll take that that's actually a really awesome move into turn two to get two places in one so we're up into P eight now and we've got a lot of clean air ahead of us yellow flags are up ahead of us so maybe that we're going to get some more positions is uh, someone has someone had a crash is there been a front wing off is there an engine failure we can't tell we're not, we're not too sure for now but all I know is I can see Massa just up the road there as we come through it is a safety car that has been called out and at this moment in time and after the race I still don't know why this safety car was called out it's lap three there was a yellow flag momentarily up ahead I am as confused as you guys may be. I don't really know why. As you can clearly see, there was no really change in the pecking order. It's Valtteri Bottas at the moment that lead the Russian Grand Prix from Sebastian Vettel's Ferrari in second place. In third place, though, you can see is our teammate, Sergio Perez. He's had a lightning start. I don't know what on earth Checo had for his breakfast this morning on Sunday, but he has been lightning at the beginning of this Grand Prix compared to me. I've been going backwards. He's been going forwards. He's in third there ahead of Max Verstappen, who's got ahead of Kimi Raikkonen and Lewis Hamilton. So a very poor start for Hamilton, Raikkonen, myself, and Ricardo. So all the kind of, uh, you know, it's all by one by one kind of. You've got one teammate doing really great and the other teammate falling behind there in this Grand Prix so far. But let's try and rectify that if we can because now we move on to the end of the safety car period. Lap seven it will be. So at this point still, again, I really don't know why the safety car came out, but it was out for the usual three laps it usually is on this game. So now we're going to try and close up on Massa. You can see obviously we've all bunched up, so it's a perfect time to try and make a move. You can see side by side, a bit of action there for the Ferrari car for Raikkonen as he's trying to overtake Max Verstappen. I think that was just up ahead. So Verstappen falling back a little bit as they go side by side through the entirety of turn three. And I think my teammate Perez is also having a go at maybe Sebastian Vettel there through, uh, through turn three. But we're going to still have a look at Massa still being blocked off here. There's a bit of locking up there from Hamilton up ahead. I think that was the tire smoke for Hamilton. But at the moment, unable to get past Massa. I'm just trying to maybe, you know, squeeze around, trying to move the car around the track, trying to suss out, maybe put Massa off at the moment. That's not working out for me as we go into the heart of Sector 2. And it maybe we can try and line up a move though, because he's had a really poor exit off that corner. We're going to dive it down the inside. Going to be very, very close across the curbing. Massa, we leave him the room though, to be fair to him. So we've left him enough space. We go round the outside. We're going to break a little bit early, go for the switchback. It's not worked. 
The switch back has not worked. We need to deport that move because we've lost a bit of our end plate there. So that's my bad. That's entirely my fault. I tried to make the switch back. I misjudged it that time. So now we've lost a bit of our end plate. It's not too bad though. It's only yellow uh, bordering on orange. So I think we could probably uh, kind of deal with it. So we try and get around the outside as up ahead. Similarly, I think that is uh, Hamilton and Raikkonen going side by side briefly there. But we go through and make that move under the bridge. And it's going to be a really nice move as we now finally get it done on the inside of this corner now in the left and right then uh, of the last sector. And we're up into P7 then. So good move for us on Massa. Uh, initially didn't look like it with that switchback failing a little bit. But now we just have to carry on with the end plate damage. To be honest, through these corners, you can see it doesn't seem too bad visually. And the, uh, the feeling I had in the car wasn't too bad. I think the fact that it's obviously the 2017 downforce in the mod definitely helped kind of curb any kind of uh, issues I was feeling with the end plate. And as we move on to lap 9 now, chasing after Max Verstappen. There's an engine failure for my teammate, Sergio Perez. Another one. It's a third one out of four races. How unlucky is that? that oh, that's gonna, there's going to have to be some words there for the, the staff back at the Force India factory because that is three engine failures in four races for Sergio Perez. If you remember, the only one he didn't have an engine failure at was China, where obviously I won that race and Perez came home in a very good, I think it was top five position. So... Yeah, very kind of do or die stuff there for Sergio's engine at least. So yeah, that's really, really unfortunate because that doesn't help me as well. I, I'm kind of upset by that myself because, you yeah, know, that's not going to help me out the constructors. I'm trying my best to try and drag the Force India up and we're in a fight with Red Bull basically and the constructors for the entire season pretty much and Perez not scoring three out of four races is uh, not going to help me in the slightest. I mean, it doesn't matter how many points I get. If he's not also pulling the weight, then, uh, it's, you know, it's going to be tough. But Verstappen, speaking of the Red Bull cars, Verstappen comes in now for the pit stop there. You can see we go on to lap 11 and we're still out on these ultra softs. We're in P2 now. We're in caught by Massa though. So we go defensive to the inside line to defend our line into turn two. Massa tries to hang around the outside. Doesn't work out for him, but he probably gets a better exit because into turn three then we've got the outside line. He's going to just subtly move on to the inside track here. And there's the, basically only way, one way you can do turn three is basically go side by side like that if you're trying to make a move. And Massa goes round the outside then into turn four. Gets us. We're going to have to try and outbreak him then into the next corner as we end the uh, Sector 1 split time, we hit the apex, we're going to have to try and push Massa out as best we can, he's still going to hang around the outside, so fair play to him, he's doing quite well here to put up a fight, but surely now this will be it through the sharp right-hander there, as we go to the heart of Sector 2, and we do keep that P2 for now, but basically the plan is, you can clearly see, as we've gone to lap 11, we're going a lot longer on Ultrasofts than Verstappen, or any of the two Mercedes or Ferrari cars did, and we actually move it on three laps later to lap 14, and now is when we're only coming in for the uh, for the set of what will be super soft tyres. You can see Bottas has already caught up to second and he's made that pit stop. So Bottas has got lightning speed at the moment in this Grand Prix. So uh, just like the real life, uh, him in real life, obviously, he's doing very well here at Russia. But um, I think in hindsight, I'm not going to lie, it probably was actually not a great idea to stay out that long because I think I should have maybe come in around lap 12 when Massa did. Because unlike in, season, in the previous season I did of this mod career with Raikkonen, uh, that car was obviously very, very good. Whereas this Force India is not as good as that Ferrari car. That was basically the fastest car in the season, uh, pretty much over the course of the season. And so doing the overcut, staying out worked very well. But in this Force India, I have a feeling it won't. It hasn't really worked out for us because we do come out behind Danica Fiat, behind Nico Hulkenberg, and all these guys have made their first pit stop, I do believe. So we have really actually quite lost out quite a bit of time there. I just don't know if I, I've kind of fell off the pace on the ultra softs and I just didn't realize it with the lap times because I felt very comfortable. The tyres didn't feel bad, but I guess the lap times just weren't there, which is kind of very much like real life. You know, the drivers don't complain about the tyres too much anymore. It's just the fact that the lap times aren't there. But anyway, as we move on to lap 16, though, we do make the move, or try to make the move, on Danica Fiat here, the uh, obviously the home Grand Prix man, the Russian. We go down the inside and we do a bit of a switchback move through turn three, which is kind of nice, on the Toro Rosso, and we get up into P16. Up ahead, you can see it's Pasco Berlin in the Sauber. So far, doing a great job there, actually, to be ahead of on the Toro Rosso cars. So fair play to him. But we're going to try and spoil the party now as we duck into the left-hand side of the circuit, round the outside as we enter sector three. We're just going to just about hang it through on third gear just a uh, very very close up you know it's very tough to give people the room through Russia really because all the corners you know the, the, the straights may be quite wide but through all the corners all the corners pinch up together so it's very difficult and you can see now 
as we move on to lap 16 uh, into sector 3. Daniel Ricciardo is the one now out of this Grand Prix. So two engine failures in this race. So who knew Russia was going to be such an engine uh, heavy race here today? And you can see, look at that, the amount of smoke pouring out of Ricardo's engine now. As we go down the main straight, he's going to try and park it up on the left here and we get a, a, a face full of smoke pretty much as we try and close up onto the back of what will be Roman Grosjean who is fighting Nico Hulkenberg. Obviously Hulkenberg was initially behind Grosjean so he's overtaken him but Grosjean's going to try and re-overtake uh, the German and so can we try and get in the mix as Hulkenberg's pushed out a little bit. Can we go round the outside in turn three? It's going to be very, very tough. Doesn't look like we'll be able to do it. We're going to have to maybe make a little bit of a dive bomb into turn four if we do really want to make this move. We're going to go for it. Very, very close. Nico thankfully for him and us he gives us the room so respect to him and we made that move and it hasn't turned out like a Kimi Raikkonen like we did last season in the Ferrari car and so now onto lap 18 we close immediately back on to Roman Grosjean to overtake him in a very easy straight line move with DRS it's very very OP here at Russia and so we're up into P11 now so one point uh, one place off the points and who would have thought it would be Julian Palmer who is the one who stands in a way of points but that this is how much time I've lost in that overcut really I shouldn't be fighting here for P10 I should have been fighting still for about you know P6 P7 but yeah the overcut I just misjudged it I've really just misjudged it I just thought I would have had more pace on the ultra softs going those uh, kind of extra three laps clearly not so now as we move on to lap 20 we're only now catching up to P9 Carlos Sainz so it's a bit of a damage limitation really and a catch up to try and get back up to where I think we should kind of be in this race and so now we have to try and overtake the second Toro Rosso of the afternoon. Carlos Sainz doing a good enough job through uh, under the tunnel section, under the bridge section, I should say, to defend from us. And then we can see we get a little bit oversteer through that final corner. So just have to be patient. Unfortunately, really, it's just a case of waiting uh, as we go through the final corner, really, to get the DRS down the main straight. Uh, this track is really just kind of set up to make moves on the main straight, unfortunately. None of the corners are very inviting. I know I can make some a few moves here and there, but that's why you never see really too many moves in the corners in real life, because none of the corners are really too open to allow that. So we make another pretty easy move down the inside. Uh, you know, we get back from the racing line even before the braking begins on Carlos Sainz, uh, unfortunately. It's a, you know, it's, a, it's an overtake, but it's never uh, thrilling to see a straight line overtake like that. But we move on to lap 22, and I'll take it if I can, because now we close up to Kevin Magnussen in the second ass car. So we're overtaking a lot of two by two cars here. So we overtake the second ass car of the afternoon. Uh, not quite yet into turn two, but hopefully you can get it done in turn three. So we set ourselves up, got good traction. We have had a little bit of rich mix to play with, but I need to be careful because obviously, uh, as I've said so many times in, this, uh, in the videos on this mod career, the fuel is very crucial in this mod, but we do send it down the inside of Magnussen. Very, very close stuff. Some contact has been made, so that was a little bit iffy there, but Carlos Sainz is going to try and make it three wide momentarily. We got defensive there to try and defend from Magnussen, who does brilliantly, to be fair to him, to go round the outside to try, try and come back. And he's actually got ahead of us at the moment. He's fully ahead of us, so we have to do a bit of a dive down the inside. A little bit of contact made. I apologize, Magnuson. I'm sorry for that, but we go side by side now. I'm giving him the room, so he's got all the kind of room to come back at me, and he does so, to be fair to him. So we go around the outside once again to try and get this P8, and we do just about squeeze ahead of him there. But down this main straight now, he'll have DRS, so we have to try and do some defending of our own. The question for us is, is uh, Carlos Sainz and Palmer going to be a threat for us as well? They get the kind of double toe off Magnuson, but here he goes, the Dane on the left-hand side, so we have to try and dive it down the inside to defend the inside line into as we go under the bridge section. He's going to be on the inside, but you can see on the mirror there on the left-hand side, we just about squeeze him out, and that's going to be the position as we saw once again for about the fifth million time in this race. Valtteri Bottas setting the fast half of the Grand Prix, and Valtteri Bottas does indeed, you can see on the left-hand side, come through to win the Russian Grand Prix. It's a dominant win there for Bottas, I feel. I think he was in the lead for the entire Grand Prix, pretty much, uh, apart from lap one, I think. I think he got into the lead very early on in the Grand Prix and then just stood there, but we are going to come home for what will be a very hard fought P8. I would have liked it have been more. I thought it would have been more, honestly, by the start of this race. But as I said, I think I actually did kind of fluff up a little bit with the tyre strategy there, even though it's only a one-stop. I can't believe I'm quite saying that, that I made a tyre strategy error on a one-stop race. But there you go. Um, yeah, a, a, a very, very hard-fought P8. I mean, I think, to be fair, also to me, though, I think the Williams cars showed a lot more pace than they did in qualifying um, down the straights there. But meanwhile, anyway, for the championship, that does mean that we're still in P4, though, just ahead of Vettel, just about by one point there. You can see Raikkonen and Bottas getting ever closer and it's still a 1-2 for the two Finns in the championship there. So very close stuff with them. Lewis Hamilton 60 points. A little bit ways off his teammate and Raikkonen but I, I'm sure that'll hot up eventually also with Vettel closing up. But at the moment we're doing a decent job to be so far ahead of Max Verstappen and Daniel Ricciardo. As you can see there Perez way down the order with only 6 points to his name. So that's what I was, that's what I was talking about. You know 
that's uh, that's just not what you want to see because as we move on to the destructors, we're, we've got 55 points there in third place. So we're still third. We're still ahead of Red Bull, but Red Bull have got a lot now on us. So they went from 26 points to 38. We only went from 51 to 55. So if we have two more races like this, Red Bull are going to overtake us once again. So I really need Perez to try and hopefully not have an engine failure. Obviously, it's not his fault. It's the car's fault. But yeah, fingers crossed that doesn't happen. And up ahead, you can see Mercedes and Ferrari in a world of their own. But uh, in contrast to the first season we did of this mod, it's a Mercedes at the moment who are doing a better job. So just showing that me and Vettel definitely were a very good partnership in the first season of this mod career that we did. But anyway, guys, if you have enjoyed this episode, hit the like button. I think pretty much, I, I, th I think a very action-packed Grand Prix, actually, to say it was Russia. I actually was surprised at how many overtakes and battles I was having around Russia because I was kind of dreading of how boring this race would have been. But it was actually pretty uh, pretty entertaining for me to drive, at least. So if you did enjoy it as well, hit the like button. And if you're new around here, then do get subscribed for weekly 4 on content. I've been ever. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll see you guys next time.